Good, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and perhaps good evening to the colleagues who are joining us today for this uh, one hour uh, webinar introducing M Supply um, as one of the Gavi qualified uh, logistics management information system, software solutions, and service providers. Um, this, uh, this webinar is the first one in the series of the webinars that will effectively provide deep dive um, into several, um, you know, uh, Gavi qualified uh, logistics management information system software solutions and service providers. Um, it is jointly organized by the ICTD, UNICEF ICTD, uh, Global Digital Center of Excellence, um, the Program Division and WHO Digital Health Center of Excellence, as well as the regional offices for East Asia and Pacific and the South Asia uh, office. Uh, I am, my name is Wojciech Koprowicz. I'm the regional chief of IT working for the UNICEF regional office for South Asia based in Kathmandu. And I'm also the chief at interim of the ICT Digital Center of Excellence. So today we have an opportunity to deep dive and listen about one of those qualified solutions and service providers, and that specifically is M Supply. Now, logistics management uh, is particularly important now in the context of, you know, COVID pandemic, where we have to globally manage the supply of not only uh, important uh, goods such as the vaccines, but also equipment such as the syringes. Uh, and we are aware quite well from last year that we had number of uh, for example, requirements to provide supplies of essential equipment, such as PP equipment globally. So this particular webinar will, as I said, introduce us to, to one of those potential solutions. And uh, we will also have parallel events on the similar content, introducing this and other solutions for colleagues in the other regions and, and other time zones. Um, just by the way of introduction, if you are not familiar, the ICT the Digital Center of Excellence has been launched on, in April this year. And basically the aim of it is to provide uh, you know, the, the support to the field offices, as well as the national partners in making smart and sustainable investments in planning and deployment of technology, accelerating you know, scaling of the proven technologies and solutions around the globe and also when it's fully operational in Nairobi, uh, beginning of next year, it will also support governments and other partners to advance digital public goods, as well as manage and support in-house digital solutions. Uh, the Digital Health Center of Excellence that I've mentioned earlier was effectively established as a joint initiative between UNICEF Program Division and the WHO, and it specifically provides coordinated technical assistance to national governments and partners on digital health solutions and information systems, particularly in the context of COVID-19 pandemic, as well looking down the post-COVID you know, sort of requirements and the health system needs. So as I said, this particular webinar is jointly organized by the Global Digital Center of Excellence, the Digital Health Center of Excellence, and the two regional offices. It gives me a, a, a great pleasure to, to welcome also our speakers today. So we're going to have from the M Supply, we're going to have Craig Brown. Craig actually has been working with the sustainable solutions and the development sectors in, in, since 2001, after working for a non-profit uh, medical warehouse in Nepal, so in this particular region where I'm based. He's originally a pharmacist, but uh, Currently, he, he is effective overseeing uh, a team that is spanning eight countries and leading the transition to uh, M Supply Foundation and an open source model. The other two speakers will be Richard Morozo, who is the M Supply consultant. He has several years of experience in supply management in the pharmaceutical industry. And we're also going to hear from Adam Dewey, who is another M Supply consultant and who was previously working on the projects uh, involving local communities in countries such as Ecuador, Uganda, and India. I would like to also welcome uh, two UNICEF colleagues, uh, Benjamin Grab, who will be effectively facilitating the session, and Alec Mujereza, who is uh, representing the Digital Health Center of Excellence. So in terms of housekeeping, um, we expect that you will have quite a few questions, perhaps. 
So we would like to request that uh, you use the question and answer feature for the webinar and post your questions there. And then we'll be aiming to answer as many as we can during you know, sort of the Q&A session. And also uh, the recording and the presentations from, from this webinar will be made available later on. So without much further ado, I you know, look forward to having a very uh, informative and uh, an engaging session. And without much further ado, I'd like to pass over to Craig to, to, to basically share this presentation. Over to you, Craig, thank you. Me unmute. Uh, thank you, Monty, and uh, Ben for the invitation. Thank you, everybody, for uh, uh, giving us one hour of your time. Uh, today's uh, uh, presentation will be a, a whirlwind tour, so uh, we fully understand that uh, we will leave a lot of uh, things unanswered, and we'll try and uh, just give you a, a quick overview and uh, we'd invite you to get in contact with us uh, if you want to drill down into uh, areas that uh, we pique your interest in this presentation. So here we go, thank you. Okay, so uh, we uh, got uh, 20 slides to get through in uh, 15 minutes. So that's a uh, very bad PowerPoint form, I think. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 20 years ago, started in Nepal from a particular need, and we have now grown to 44 staff. Uh, we are, uh, have a team of five in Cote d'Ivoire, and along with Richard, they are our Francophone team, uh, and then about uh, 20 people each in New Zealand and Nepal. So uh, we are transitioning 1st of April next year. We will move all our work into the M Supply Foundation, and uh, uh, we are registered as a not-for-profit. Uh, and uh, Away we go. So the aims of the foundation, uh, you can uh, look this up on the New Zealand Government's uh, Charities Commission website. Uh, so we're focusing on doing as much good as we can. So actual effectiveness, we don't want to just create systems, we want to see people get access to medicines and uh, uh, improved health outcomes. Uh, focusing on local capacity, uh, it's not about us, it's about, uh, it's about you and the countries that uh, we're working in. Uh, a real focus on long on the long term. We've been around for 20 years and uh, we want to stick around as long as we need it in however many years that is in the future. And uh, we're now committed to moving everything into an open source model. So uh, about 30 countries around the world, uh, you can use them supply in five different languages at the moment. So now, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Greg. So now, uh, what M Supply can do? So, we M Supply offers uh, the traditional set of functionalities of uh, LMIS um, from quantification, and on top of that, we also have available the patient dispensing module, so uh, less traditional, I would say. Uh, so again, if you have specific questions about the functionalities of M Supply, feel free to to ask them at the Q and A session. What's very important to uh, know about M Supply is that it's uh, offline first architectures, which means that you don't need internet to run the application either on the desktop or on the on the on your tablet. Uh, you can basically run uh, M Supply without internet. That means manage your stock, dispense to your patient, receiving stock, issuing stock to another facility, and you only need uh, internet like once a day, for instance, to synchronize everything with the server. So to share the data across your organization. Uh, here you have uh, a, a, a snapshot of our dispensing module in our um, Android application, uh, M Supply Mobile. And here you can see, so basically uh, you have to pick your patients. Uh, that's the first step. Second step is going to be about the prescriber. So you can manage all that in M Supply Mobile, select the items, give your directions for each product, and then click on next and you have dispensed product to your uh, patients. Here, because we know that could be uh, quite interesting for UNICEF, uh, we have developed uh, the M-Supply vaccines module. Uh, there's several features uh, related to that module. So um, of course you can dispense a uh, dose of a vaccine uh, to patients. Uh, and uh, also on top, you can also we have integrated forms also to be able to collect uh, additional data that was particularly useful for the COVID-19 rollout, for instance, where we needed to collect for some of our users, customers, 
uh, demographic data, clinical data, such as comorbidities, uh, as part of the patient registration process. And another uh, very important critical topic, especially when we're talking about vaccines, is the cold chain monitoring. So it's already integrating in our uh, M Supply mobile uh, application, but we also developed a separate application that we call the M Supply Cold Chain app. So you don't have to be an M Supply user to actually use that uh, application. It's open source. Um, it works with uh, uh, with uh, cheap and reliable uh, Bluetooth sensors. Uh, you can pair as many sensors as you want with the, uh, uh, I mean, reasonable amount of sensors to your tablets. And uh, that will allow you to monitor several uh, uh, store, uh, cold storage location, for instance, in a warehouse. So that's what you can see on the screen right now. So you have different uh, chart. Uh, each one of them is for one specific uh, storage location. And uh, you, will have, you will be able to see, uh, thanks to an alert system, if there's been a breach on one specific location. So it's me, uh, so M Supply Dashboard. This is my favorite part of the system. I like to see the big picture. And with the dashboard, you can see basically any part of data from your organization, you can imagine. It's super flexible. It can be fully customized. And if you have someone in the organization that um, knows a little bit about Postgres or SQL, they can make it display really whatever you want. Um, the data is updated in real time. So um, the data from the central server is coming across every few minutes. So you can see exactly what's going on with your organization at any point in time. It's all open source, so you can play with it however you like. Uh, and it can be accessed via a web browser, so you can be anywhere in the world and access this data. But it's also permissions, so you can restrict who has access to what data. Um, I think it's a really fantastic feature. Uh, how is M Supply deployed? Well, this is like a really generic overview, but we have in the yellow box uh, the central server. That's the brains behind the whole operations. That can either be hosted in the cloud or it can be on site in the country that the uh, M Supply is being deployed to. Each of the green boxes represents an example site where you might use M Supply. So, for example, a hospital or a warehouse or a small clinic. And they would access M Supply using a laptop or an Android tablet or maybe a desktop uh, computer. So, the important thing to notice is that each of these green boxes can act independently, even if they lose internet connection, they can still carry on with their daily operations. And then once the connection comes back, all the data is synced between the server and the green boxes, and it's made good. And then on the right in the purple box, we have the dashboard, and that is yeah, accessible from anywhere in the world via a web browser. Uh, M Supply data security and privacy. So we take data security seriously here at M Supply. Um, we've seen like a big increase in ransomware attacks against organizations over the last year. So to try and mitigate that, we um, developed some security policies and to try and reduce the risk of those attacks. Um, all our data is encrypted as a standard uh, in our backups. They're all stored as encrypted data. We can encrypt the, um, the full disk of the client servers if required. And all our data transmissions are via secure protocols. We also align with GDPR to um, protect the rights of data subjects. We're something we really embrace. Like we like transparency and we like the idea of the data subject being in control of their own data. So anything such as the right to be forgotten or the right to modify their data, we will ha happily comply with that. Um, over to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yes. Yeah, so now a little bit, uh, some words about what we've done in the real world. So we've been, uh, we had the opportunity to work alongside with the Tonga Ministry of Health recently. I think it's actually still ongoing. So for their uh, COVID-19 vaccine rollout. So basically what they did is that they used M Supply to collect information about the patients for the uh, registration, so before the vaccination. And then, as you can see on the screen, they've been using uh, our uh, M Supply mobile app to, uh, yeah, to actually dispense the, the vaccine to the patients. So we've been doing that with our partners and friends of uh, Beyond Essentials in Tonga. Uh, also, one thing's very important, we had uh, good feedback uh, from them about the dashboard. They, it was the first time that the Ministry of Health was able to collect, to have uh, real uh, live, real time data about their vaccination campaign, immunization campaign. So yeah, that's part of the, of the good thing uh, we heard about this in Tonga. 
Sorry. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, we've been working in Myanmar since uh, uh, 2014, and uh, they were one of the countries that tried online uh, system first and found that it failed. And when they moved to end supply synchronization, uh, that's when the system was really successful. Great story of uh, uh, national capacity running running the system. They they do a fantastic job. Uh, obviously, the last few months have been extremely difficult, and uh, we don't know what's going to happen next. But uh, uh, they have a a, um, a plan uh, to expand out to roughly three thousand sites, and uh, UNICEF uh, Myanmar is uh, started to work with us along with Chai to incorporate cold chain. So Côte d'Ivoire, it's a project that started in 2019. M Supply has been chosen to be a national LMIS for the country. So, so far we've been, uh, in, uh, M Supply has been installed in 25 districts, more than 600 sites. Um, maybe what's something that would be nice to say about our work in uh, Côte d'Ivoire is that we have been building special, specific modules for them. For instance, they wanted to be able to include the insurance scheme in the, in the patient dispensing. So that's something that we did for them. And also they wanted some integration with another system, open LMIS. And uh, I think that's a nice transition to how we can make uh, M supply turn over all. <laughs> so uh, out of the box, we have a DHIS2 integration using uh, their API. Uh, we also uh, integrate with open Elmas in uh, two different countries. And, each using a custom method. And we, we uh, often integrate either with financial systems and uh, also quite a few countries uh, use custom spreadsheets to get data either in or out of M-Supply that uh, we are able to read and write. Uh, factors for success. Uh, we could talk for more than an hour just on this slide. So uh, I, I think um, uh, we've tried to highlight some of the main points. Uh, I won't go into them in detail, but uh, we'd love to talk to you more. Uh, uh, I think uh, from our side, uh, uh, I think um, maybe just that we're very people focused. We realize that uh, the system is not the solution unless uh, you work on uh, not just local uh, uh, technical capacity, but uh, local commitment, both from users, but also from management. Uh, without leadership buy-in, uh, we will never have a, a successful system in a country. Okay, so uh, several different projects. Some of them we haven't even talked about today. Uh, we uh, have uh, funding from uh, the Australian government for a new open source medicines registration system. Uh, fast medicines registration is very topical over the last year. Uh, we're uh, just getting working on uh, phase one of OpenM Supply, the desktop application, and uh, we will have beta versions out by the end of this year, and we will have uh, uh, phase two uh, starting about this time next year. Phase one will be usable by itself. Obviously, it won't have every feature. I think this answers a little bit one of the questions uh, that have come up in the Q&A already. Uh, so, uh, uh, we've had very generous uh, funding uh, for the foundation from the New Zealand government uh, over the next uh, five-year grant, which we're one, one year through, and also from the Australian government to develop open M supply. Uh, we have, uh, before uh, we uh, uh, established the foundation, we have um, uh, been operating for 20 years by uh, being funded for specific projects uh, and from regular support fees from countries. Uh, we are committed to building a model that is both affordable for countries uh, uh, and is uh, sustainable for us. So that's a, that's a tough call, but we're, we're committed to being in the middle and moving to a foundation model says that there's uh, not uh, shareholders to also satisfy as, a, as, a third, as another constraint. Uh, the last slide, oh, we, we have uh, some typical costs there. The, co the costs just vary around, um, oh no, that was a different slide, sorry. Okay, this one, um, uh, our, our, our designer for Open M Supply, our, our user interface designer um, and his whole family have had COVID for the last two weeks. So uh, he just got these to us this morning. 
So these are highly provisional, but uh, uh, this is just some reassurance that we're um, the new open end supply will have a, a modern uh, design that works well from a, uh, any device. Uh, we're also uh, attempting to support right to left languages so um, for use in the Middle East and Afghanistan. So uh, that's a mock up of uh, M supply flipped around. And costs, uh, two, two main points here. One is, one is that costs reduce with volume. And uh, uh, the, the numbers on the right, we won't go into in detail, but uh, everything varies hugely depending on uh, what the national capacity is. So the more you have national capacity, the more we can step back. And uh, of course that reduces, well, sometimes it reduces costs, sometimes it hides the cost in, in uh, a different budget in the Ministry of Health's budget rather than the budget for us. But, uh, I think you get the idea. Um, down at uh, large scale mobile installations, uh, less, less than $10 a month per site. If you can't get $10 a month of benefit out of using uh, a system, uh, we, we shouldn't be there. So uh, we hope we're really good value for money at that scale. And for mobile, that includes uh, the temperature monitoring. And uh, further than that, you don't have to pay for a separate SIM card for the temperature monitoring because you use the internet connection of the mobile device. So, yeah, I don't think we made it clear that all the temperature data from the sensors sent, uh, synchronizes to either MSY mobile or desktop, and from there it synchronizes through our system up to the dashboards. So, on a dashboard, you can build a, a, a dashboard for the whole country. And it's uh, close to real time, just a few minutes um, for synchronization to happen. So. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we uh, almost almost uh, got there in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. So we'll, transi we'll transition over to uh, giving you a, a demo of the systems. So we'll try and keep this to uh, about uh, 15, 15 minutes and allow uh, 20 minutes at the end for questions and uh, interaction with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So what you can where you are about to see uh, on screen is a live, it's the live uh, of uh, the live stream of the, the tablet I'm holding now. So but on the oh, you just have to do uh, something on. I need to do. Is it on Android debugging? I'm still on Android. Excuse us a little yeah, second while we technical. just the uh, getting the screen from the the mobile device to cast to your screen sharing is the sometimes a little. Oh, it should work now. Okay. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the the screen with the four main menu of uh, the uh, supply mobile app. So here we can imagine that we are a small clinic, and we want to do a day of uh, uh, we want to dispense vaccines, and so we can check our stock uh, of AstraZeneca vaccines, for instance. And you can see here, I have only 30, so I may actually want to order more from our central pharmacy or central hospital. So I can create what we call a supplier acquisition or internal order, create a new one. I can select my supplier. You can obviously have more than one, uh, depending on your needs. Um, we have also a nice system where you can set up master list, so you don't have to type all your item codes again if you usually order the same. So here, I'm going to go for my vaccines uh, master list. There's only two items. And uh, you have some information uh, available here, so you can actually see again your current stock, 30. You have also some information about your average monthly use. Could be useful to know exactly how much you need. Uh, so, and the system uh, will be able to 
uh, suggest quantity. So here it doesn't suggest anything because it, the inner is now together one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then let's put it to three months. And here, as you can see now, I need three months of stock. That's uh, the months of stocks I need. So the system will suggest to order 56 units. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to use the suggested quantity and finalize my order. And then when I finalize the order, uh, the order will be sent to the central pharmacy. And that's my colleague, Adam. <laughs> OK, so I'm working in the central pharmacy. And um, so Richard has, or my uh, remote site has sent a requisition through. I can then go and see, uh, have a look for any uh, outstanding requisitions. In here, the top line is the requisition that Richard just submitted. So I can take a look at this and see that it's for an AstraZeneca COVID vaccine. I can see how much stock we have on hand, which is quite a bit, um, how much stock they have in the remote site and how much they're asking for here. They're asking for 56. So I can say, okay, I, I want to give, yep, more 56. Oh, second line, please. And that should be along here. So here it said, okay, I'm going to supply them 56. So um, then I can create a customer invoice from that. Oh, yeah, you need, oh, sorry. I think it didn't take into account your supply continue, but you can type the 56 here. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not as familiar as Richard and Craig with this. <laughs> so I'm going to give them 56. So I'm going to create the customer invoice now. Am I sure you want to create it? Yes, I am. That's created me an invoice. From in here, I can have a look at the AstraZeneca item line, and it's given me the option of a, a couple of different batches to choose from. Um, they, but both batches have different expiry dates, so I can make a decision based on the expiry date about which batch I want to supply to the remote site. So I'm going to give which one do you want? <laughs> the one with the longest expiry date. The longest expiry date. Okay. <laughs> you never let the customer change. <laughs> And how many do you want to 56? Right? Uh, it should have uh, no. been. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. No, no. That um, should be packs of 10. Oh, it's packs of 10. So it's like in 60. So it's uh, so, uh, six, six, yeah. six packs of 10. So uh, I've done the right thing. Oh, yeah. Or was it packs? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh was it doses? I can't remember. Uh, 56. Uh, I think oh, it's five or six. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So quantity, no, he's asked oh, 56 oh, times one. Awesome. Yeah, that's fine. So he's asked for 56 lots of one, I've given him six lots of 10. So hopefully we should be okay. And then I will finalize this. So and then press OK. Oh, backwards. Uh, just, just click OK. Okay, so now I've completed the customer invoice. We packed all the things and shipped it out, and it should appear over at the remote site um, on Richard's mobile device. So let's go and see. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> over to you, Richard. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, it's done already. Yeah. I can see it. Actually, we can see uh, on the screen here, we have a little badge on, uh, next to the supplier invoice button. So you can see that I have one pending supplier invoice, uh, which is in the uh, M supply language, means that you receive a delivery and you want you need to look at it and to enter it into your stock. As you can see, I can see the details. I can open it to see a bit more. So that's great. The central facility is sending me 60 units. Uh, seems I'm checking my deliveries. Everything is OK. So I can, uh, I can finalize that uh, supplier invoice. And when I finalize this invoice, I will then uh, move the stock into my uh, own inventory in my facility. In the, System-wise, so that's perfect. I think I'm I'm good with the available stock I have right now. So now maybe it's time to actually dispense vaccines to my patients. So here do we have the vaccination button? So you can look for existing uh, patient. Their name. So there is one patient called Adam surname. So here you have some information that you can enter for that patient. 
So only the basic one are mandatory, but then you can choose to uh, enter an email or phone number if you want to. Yeah, everything's fine. I'm gonna click on next. And you have the vaccine uh, dispensing module here. So first, uh, you are able to actually select the vaccinator. If there is a, um, so you can uh, upload a list of vaccinator in your system. So here we have nurse back set up. Uh, the first, you're gonna choose between your two batch. The system will, by default, always choose the one with the shortest, uh, sorry, uh, the vaccines uh, with the shortest expiry. Actually, it's the batch, right? So the batch. that's what you can see on the on the right. So it will first choose the 30 I had from another batch before using the 60 that I just received from the center facility. But as always, you can override the system and just choose the batch that you want to dispense. Here you have a few checkbox on the right as well. If the vaccine is refusing vaccine, it was more for the COVID-19 in case the patient is coming, but in the end, it doesn't want to get the vaccines. You have a way to actually to flag that. And sometimes from a vial, you can get an extra dose. So not to mess with your inventory figures, you can just, uh, uh, flat this that the dose that you're actually dispensing is an, is an extra dose. Uh, I mean, compared to the normal uh, number of dose on, of your vial. So everything is fine. And once I've done that, to, to, to actually dispense the vaccine to my patient, I just have to click on confirm or OK next. So we can't see it actually on the screen. It's actually on the lower part. Uh, but you have a way to actually, if you have to do uh, many uh, vaccination in a row, you can click on OK Next, and then that will go back to the first screen, and you can uh, look for your next patient, the one that you want to dispense vaccines to. Yeah. Very good. Maybe another just to show that yeah. the integrated part. So we have the in and supply mobile. We have the cold chain part. So for instance, before dispensing your vaccines to the to the patients, you can actually check that everything is going okay in your fridge. So here I have one sensor in my fridge. Fridge, sorry. And I can read all the data from here. And if I want to look what's happening there. Oh, OK. So here I can see that something went wrong uh, a few hours ago. So maybe I need to check the quality of my vaccines to make sure, for instance, looking at the BVM uh, status to make sure that everything is OK before I can actually dispense it. So that's the way. So you can actually check the temperature from Amsterdam Mobile. But now maybe. Yeah, this one sure. as well. So as we said during the presentation, we also have developed a standalone app, which is M Supply. Oh. Oh, Ah, no, you're perfect. So here, uh, this is again the live stream of the of our app on a tablet that I'm holding in my hands, and you can actually the temperature that you can see here coming from the canteen fridge. So that's real temperature, probably a bit hot for the fridge. So yeah, so that's uh, the display. So I can basically check all my line, and if there is a temperature breach, uh, the the temperature with the little thermometer uh, will uh, become red and start to flash to indicate that something is wrong with this particular location. So yeah, and then you have the possibility obviously to download the data. And yeah, I was thinking one thing to mention is that you can tie a location to a batch so that you can uh, track to see which batches um, have had a temperature breach yeah. in the past. Yeah, so that's actually so. The standalone app is only about temperature monitoring, but then you can think you can uh, cross those data with your inventory data to actually know which what part of your stock has been impacted by a temperature exposure. So I think that was pretty much. Uh, we have uh, present you the M Supply desktop. Uh, when the central facility was the issuing stock to the uh, local pharmacy, mm -hmm. uh, the M Supply Mobile and our coaching app. Mm -hmm. So I think now, if you have any questions, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh, the dashboard sorry, yeah. Do you want to uh, Sure. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, just a, a dashboard hooked up to the demo system we've been using. Uh, uh, one thing to 
just as an example, over on the right, you'll see uh, there's uh, a dashboard about asset management. So this is a new module uh, uh, funded by uh, UNDP in uh, South Sudan, but available to everybody now as part of the M supply package. Um, so it includes uh, full tracking of uh, um, assets, uh, assets by serial number and condition and location, et cetera. And uh, so that's also, all that data is also available through the dashboard. So uh, uh, the dashboard is, the main thing is it's very flexible and it can also send out reports uh, by email uh, as an Excel spreadsheet on a schedule. So you can set up this group of people will receive this report from the dashboard every week as an email attachment. How are we going? So I think uh, that's that's the that's the main points. So uh, thank you for bearing with our uh, bearing with us with that uh, super super fast tour of M supply, and uh, we look forward to answering your questions or or at least uh, trying to. Thank, thank, thank you, you, Craig and uh, Richard and Adam for for this presentation and the demonstration. Uh, we have quite a few questions coming up on Q&A, so obviously there's quite a lot of interest in, in terms of the uh, features and facilities that your, your solution provides. Um, so maybe now I invite Ben. Uh, ben, if you can maybe moderate the Q&A session. Over to you, Ben. Thanks, folks. And uh, I just want to say congrats to the M Supply team for a super informative webinar. Um, and really sorry to hear that your user interface colleagues are, are down with COVID. Um, I must admit, I had many pangs of jealousy at the webinar, uh, looking at you all sitting in an office together without a mask uh, in New Zealand. And uh, I'm sure I'm not alone. We're very privileged, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Now, we've had a huge number of uh, questions coming through, and we'll, we'll work through those top to bottom. Uh, so thanks, colleagues. If anyone's uh, looking at the Q&A, please continue to upvote any questions that you have. We only have about 20 minutes to get through what's there. We won't get through them all, but we will make an effort to share the questions that we don't get through with the M Supply team and make those available to all attendees in a written format. So kicking off with the first one, um, if the country is already in the process of developing their own software to register patients and monitor supply chains, where can M Supply come in and, and be integrated into that system? Over to you. Uh, we uh, can. We're quite happy to work with a, a different. Uh, uh, master patient registry, as long as that registry has an API that uh, we can access. Uh, so uh, ideally, obviously, the, the LMIS should not be the source of truth for patients, but uh, M Supply often is that because there isn't anything else. Uh, and the other part of your question, sorry, was um, uh, uh, for uh, monitoring supply. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're happy to we realize that not all transitions can happen instantly and we're happy to just try and uh, integrate as best with other supply systems. But we're very used to interoperability. Uh, for a Vanuatu, they, for example, they have a, a national ID card with a QR code. So we're building barcode scanning of that QR code into, into M Supply Mobile. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. And I think, um, you know, the response uh, definitely indicates is that these things aren't very easy. We really need to do maybe a, a deeper dive into the country ecosystem and enabling environment. And I just want to give a plug for um, UNICEF colleagues on the call. You have regional technology for development advisors and they're on standby to support you with any follow-up calls. So if during the webinar today you've gone, ah, oh, I really want to meet with Craig. I really want to meet with the team at M Supply. Um, would really encourage you to reach out to those focal points, and we can we can facilitate kind of follow up calls uh, to do a deep dive and try and answer these things in detail. And the next question is coming in from David Hipgrave, who I think is in our uh, one of our Middle East country offices, and he's asking, looks good for what is stored where, and whether it's in good condition, but doesn't seem to deal with the transport and the logistics side. 
Hem Supply Team, could you give an example of where uh, the transport and the logistics has been incorporated? Uh, it's on our to-do list as a, as a separate open source app. And obviously there's a whole another aspect there to uh, route planning and that kind of thing. Uh, what M Supply does provide is reasonably good proof of delivery at the moment because uh, uh, the you have uh, two ends of the transaction in the system and uh, on receipt of goods, they, they uh, verify uh, what they received, which can be different to what uh, the sending uh, facility says that they sent. Uh, but we'd flag that as if you extend our open source roadmap out a year or two, uh, a transport app is also in. Thanks. And just maybe a quick follow-up, has there ever been any integrations with existing transport systems or uh, logistics side? We have, uh, Commodix have built one and uh, they are getting us to integrate with their, with their system at the moment. Yes. Nice. Um, and the next question is from an anonymous attendee who asks, what is your capacity in localization of the software? including uh, translation into local languages. Uh, so we're already uh, in uh, French and English and Spanish uh, and uh, Portuguese for the mobile app and also uh, Lao and Cambodia, Khmer language at the moment. And uh, we, there's translation is quite a big job. There's about 10,000 words or phrases to translate for the whole app, but uh, it can be done by a third party. It doesn't have to be done by us. Great. And if a country was looking to do that kind of thing, what's an estimate of how long that full localization process usually takes? Uh, for them, actually, I should say for the mobile app, I think it is um, maybe only 100 phrases. Uh, so it's uh, one or two days work uh, for the desktop app, uh, typically um, some weeks of work, you could expect to pay uh, five to $10,000. Great. And, uh, you know, you mentioned some of the more complex scripts in, in Lao and Khmer. Um, are there any kind of right to left, left to right considerations or, or other localization things to be aware of? Uh, we don't handle right to left languages in the current desktop app, but we're committed to handling it in open M supply. Great. Um, the next question is asking about on premise and software as a service. And you've kind of detailed the approach of having a central server. Are you considering offering M supply as a software as a service model, uh, as opposed to having a, a central server or on premise approach? Uh, for most countries we work in, uh, we do the central server as uh, a SaaS model. We, we provide the server for them. Uh, uh, it really depends on what the country's own capacity is and what their own uh, regulations are around that. We're happy to work with either model. So, uh, right. yeah. Um, the next Next question comes from uh, Janina in our Philippines country office team who asks, what's been a good strategy to gain government uptake, whether to adopt the system in whole or in part, or perhaps via API data streams? Could you give a little broader aspects on what are the success factors that you see making M Supply work? Uh, well, that's, a, that's a big topic. Um, uh, I do know a little bit about the situation in the Philippines. My understanding is that uh, uh, this is from a recent uh, global fund review that uh, like in Manila, you had uh, 12 warehouses that were each running uh, very siloed and it was very hard to even aggregate data across those. So um, sometimes I think a good strategy might be to just say, here's a, here's a big problem that we can fix very easily um, without having to wait for buy-in for the whole country system. Uh, so I think also there's a slide back. There's, there's a lot of factors. It's, um, it's like a, a Tolstoy novel, uh, all, all, all unhappy families are unhappy in your own way. In other words, there's lots of different things you need to all fix. You need to attend to every, um, every one of those elements for success. So uh, 
yeah, it's it's difficult. But uh, yeah, local leadership, yeah, that's hard to build from from our end. That's uh, yeah, we're happy happy to talk. What about this. what about a transitional approach? Like I think Janine is also asking, like, is it is there an incremental aspect to introducing something like M supply? Could you do it at a national level before you do facility or is there, is there kind of a roadmap that you sometimes recommend? Yeah, sorry, I didn't explain that very well. Um, the, the idea of um, making uh, incremental um, improvements doing a, a small, either a small vertical slice or starting off with your, with your pain points uh, and then holding on to those gains is, is really valuable. Uh, and the worst thing is to have a big flare up and, and then a failure and then everybody thinks the system will never work. So yeah, incremental gains that uh, you can hold on to are really valuable. So for example, doing a, a central warehouse and just doing that warehouse for a start. Thanks. The next question comes from Orna and our Mongolia team. And, and she asks, uh, have you ever built an integration with the visibility for vaccines uh, kind of reporting platform that was introduced by UNICEF supply divisions and other partners? And uh, I'll, I'll let you just take that. But yeah, I've got a quick follow up for that one as well. Uh, the short answer is no, but we would like to. So. Um... Uh, we haven't, uh, our, our work with uh, our cold chain equipment monitoring is reasonably new. Uh, we just got WHO certification in February. So obviously we haven't been able to do anything before that. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's, uh, we hope that's something that happens in the future. Congrats on the certification. I, I can't imagine that was an easy one to achieve. So well, well done. Um, but perhaps just to add to that question, we, you know, visibility for vaccines is often providing very top level reporting functionality. Whereas what I think we've seen from M Supply today is a very integrated approach across the various verticals of, of um, government supply chains, whether it's at the facility level or the central warehouses. Do you have any advice for uh, countries who are kind of looking to invest in top line reporting uh, if as opposed to investing in a full-fledged, fully integrated uh, LMIS system. And can you touch on maybe some of the reporting functionality of M Supply itself? Uh, I, I guess, I mean, our, our sort of model has been to collect, collect the fine-grained data and you can always aggregate it up if you have the fine-grained transactional data. Um, M Supply does also support uh, monthly requisition models or monthly reporting model. So it is possible to do that. Um, most of our reporting these days, we, we build, uh, uh, build on the dashboard. Uh, we do also have the ability to produce quite complex Excel reports, for example, but uh, the dashboard is our, is our main tool for doing that. So either from a, a periodic report or from transactional data. Along, along with the sensor data coming in from your cold chain. I think one of our unique things is, as Adam mentioned, linking the, the combination of inventory and um, temperature data in the same um, data source is something quite unique. Nice. Um, the next question we've touched on a little bit already, but I'll, I'll have you respond. How is the temperature data reflected in M supply or the, the cold chain aspect or cold chain module. Um, and is the temperature monitoring device from diff, does it work with different manufacturers? Uh, I know at UNICEF we're often working with Behringer and, and uh, cold trace, for example. Um, we, uh, so the, the data, we, we showed you the data in the M supply mobile app or, or the Android app. Uh, the data from MSUPI Mobile synchronizes straight to the dashboard. Uh, the uh, data from the cold chain app, the one with several sensors, uh, gets sent to MSUPI Desktop where you get alerts in your desktop app. And from there, it goes to the dashboard. Uh, currently, we only have certification for Blue Maestro Bluetooth sensors. 
Uh, we have found a new company that uh, has a, a, a sensor with a six year battery life and that battery is replaceable. So we're just starting work on integrating a second sensor. And at that point, we have to get WHO certification for the new sensor. So that'll be before the end of the year, we hope. Um, we are also talking with uh, Beringer in uh, Switzerland and we're quite, they're very keen to work with us and we're keen to work with them on uh, integrating their, their product because we understand they, they are used to maybe more than half the facilities. So that may be by a USB. Um, we've got a... Sorry, I missed that last bit. I think I was thinking uh, yeah, their, their current cold trace is uh, most commonly used with the UX data and then you need to plug it in by USB to, to download the data. Great. We've got, a, we've got another question on costing from an anonymous attendee. What's your estimate deployment costing if M Supply wants to be used for managing national vaccine stores, provincial stores, district, and health facility stores with remote temperature monitoring capacity? Over to you. Uh, that's a hard question to answer without knowing how many of, of stores at each level. So uh, uh, if you have access to the presentation, uh, there's some indicative prices there, but uh, we really would be keen to talk about, I don't, uh, I don't think it's okay. Um, yeah, talk, talk to us for so uh, we're committed to always finding finding a cost that works for a particular country, so. Great, yeah, and another plug there for your regional uh, technology for development, business analysts at regional level, please reach out to those contacts. If you wanna do a, a deeper dive with, with any of the vendors that we introduced during this web series, and uh, we'll help facilitate those kind of things and, and try and uh, get to the bottom of some of those cost drivers in the specific context of each country. Um, so next we've got a, a requirements question on the kind of hardware that's required to establish a central server uh, in country on premise or perhaps even on government cloud. Over to you. At the moment, it takes a Windows server. Um, smaller countries, um, one you can run for around one to 200 US dollars a month. Uh, when you get tens of millions of records, you need um, you know, a server that might might be sort of four to five hundred dollars a month, so not not expensive. Uh, our new open M survive will run on Linux, so that will reduce the cost uh, further. And if um, governments have existing Azure or AWS type cloud hosting access, are there any options like that available? Have you had experience uh, setting up on government cloud? Yes, we can we can run on uh, on uh, any of the major cloud platforms without without any problems. Right, and we've got another question from Terry who asks, how does this package manage and adapt to the multitude of national models for routine immunizations, vaccine stock, vaccine quality, and cold chain asset management? some manual and some digitized? Uh, that's, uh, that's another big question. Uh, we, oh, I mean, uh, just have this is, uh, we have the, the chance that uh, M supply is actually quite flexible. So there's a lot of parameters and preferences that you can actually configure depending on the specific needs of one specific region. So within an organization, I don't know if it's, that's what you wanted to say. So yeah. that's actually how we, M supply is able to adapt to different, different uh, uh, immunization policy in different regions. Uh, but that's obviously a lot of work with the customer to understand uh, and what are the needs. There's almost, uh, I don't think there's any large country that takes M supply out of the box. They always ask us to customize M supply in some way to, to meet their specific needs. And we're happy to do that. One of our big research efforts for open M supply is to a way of making the customizations as plugins. So you have a core that's the same for every country and the customizations are separate code bases. Thank you. Great, we've got a question from Kabir. 
a program would like to roll out M Supply Mobile in 300 facilities. Once the hardware is procured, tablets, Internet of Things, sensors, that kind of thing, what is the next step to roll out? Is it the uh, SASOL, am I pronouncing that right, to be contracted, or are there partners with SASOL who can provide the services to that particular ser that country deployment? Uh, we are very happy uh, to work with uh, other partners. Uh, we, we work a lot with uh, Beyond Essential Systems in, in many countries. Uh, obviously, uh, we also work extensively with uh, uh, Clinton Health and with Commodix. So uh, it's really uh, up to what your local capacity is. Can be a, um, next step, I think, is uh, we would want to just talk to you about making sure that uh, all the different aspects that make a, a uh, an implementation successful are covered. And uh, so uh, after that, yeah, and uh, we'd be happy to talk further. Thank you. And the next question comes from Eunice, who asks, one of the important things is to monitor the efficiency of the cold chain um, and keep track of the temperatures. Uh, what are the possible sensors that can be connected and how do they function offline? So I think we've talked about the different yeah. sensors. Uh, they work offline and that uh, the Bluetooth connection to the mobile device is maintained even without internet. Uh, and then when internet is restored, all the data that's saved on the mobile device will synchronize. Great. And we've got a, a kind of similar follow-up question, I guess, from Terry, who asks, uh, you know, the thick walls of cold, cold chain, cold rooms, uh, often block signals, that kind of thing. Do you have any experience with Bluetooth communications within that context? And how do the um, I forget what it was called, the, the Bluetooth devices you're using uh, work within those confines. Uh, Terry, uh, we had some sleepless nights over this one. Um, we, we even uh, bought uh, old cold store panels and <laughs> had them set up in our office, <laughs> discovering how bad it was. Uh, amazingly, the, the, move, the improvement in technology um, with uh, Bluetooth LE and the latest versions of Android have improved so much that uh, there's enough leakage uh, that we haven't found a core room that is the problem yet. So uh, you just, that doesn't travel through metal, but there's leakage through the door seals, and et cetera, and that's enough to get a good signal. Great. We're, we've got another question from Haran who says, you know, do you have a, an accessible demo? If we wanted to go away and kind of play with, with M Supply, is, have you got a URL or a link that you can share, maybe even in this chat uh, sure. with attendees? And also, do you have any guidance or documentation available? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, if, I, if I type an answer to this question, is that the easy way to? Um, uh, I don't know if everybody can see that. So, uh, I put. Uh, they can, yeah. So please okay. go ahead. Uh, so there, there's the main website, and um, uh, oops, just coming up. So there's uh, two things to that. Oh, fantastic! Oh, Great, <laughs> and we'll share those out in the follow-up as well. Um, so I'm trying to rush you through one last question, maybe while we've still got two minutes to go. Um, this tool that's been M supplies particularly for cold chain items, or can you use it for other modules and other programmatic supply tracking as well? Uh, uh, cold chain, cold chain is the new part. We've been used for twenty years for everything else, so very much for everything. Yes, that's actually the other way around. Yeah. yeah. How, how about outside of the health domain? Have you ever done anything with education logistics or? or other realms of uh, logistics and supply? Uh, yes, we're working with World Food Program for using M Supply for um, national food stores. And uh, we even have um, some people using it for machinery and all sorts of things. So, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Now, I just want to wrap things up there on the Q&A. Uh, we will uh, ask the M Supply team to follow up uh, on the questions we couldn't get through. 
So thank you, everyone. It's been amazing to, to hear all this information. Um, I want to give two quick plugs for UNICEF colleagues. We've developed some LMIS procurement and selection guidance, and I'll put a link in the chat and in the follow-up to that. Um, and keep in mind, if you want to do a deep dive with the team, please don't uh, fail to reach out. And uh, I'll hand back to Wojciech for any closing remarks. Over to you. And thanks, Ben, and uh, thanks, Craig, and Richard, and, and Adam, for uh, not only very interesting presentation, but also live demonstration. I think that, uh, you know, that always is in any webinar situation, a live demonstration is always a first. But you have managed very, very well. Congratulations. I think, um, I think you know, sort of uh, uh, the, judging by the number of questions that we were asked, you know, sort of by, by the participants, and we had close to 100 participants, obviously a very good uh, participation rate. Um, you know, there is a lot of interest in the solution that you have, uh, and I think this is very encouraging. I mean, what I've particularly found interesting, you know, sort of is, is as you started, you know, that uh, your solution is, uh, you know, integrating, you know, sort of the vaccine management, cold chain storage, and and these are, the, for example, very important, uh, you know, sort of factors, particularly now during the, the COVID pandemic and, you know, sort of working with the initiatives such as COVAX. Um, I think, you know, the fact that it is an open source solution, you know, sort of is, is very helpful as well. And, and from the data protection and privacy perspective, I think, you know, your statement that your, your system is fully GDPR compliant, you know, and, and, you know, data is secured and encrypted. This is also very important, particularly since, I mean, I speak, you know, from UNICEF perspective, we do have a personal data protection policy in place, you know, since, sort of since last year, and now we're in the process of transition. So, so I think, you know, sort of uh, the fact that your system already complies with that, uh, you know, um, would, be, would be obviously an, an advantage. Um, I also noted the fact that you said that you already uh, you know, sort of on the LTA with the UNDP. So we could, for example, leverage from that to, to, to deploy, um, you know, sort of the, the solution, uh, if, if, for example, that's the choice. And, um, you know, I, I think another aspect, you know, sort of that um, was obviously quite interesting from the questions that, that we got is, you know, colleagues obviously very much, you know, interested in how your solution, you know, interfaces with the other systems. I mean, I also noted, that, you know, and I think this was raised about uh, integration, for example, with the IHS2, right, which is used in a number of, you know, UNICEF offices, um, you know, for monitoring and, and other solutions. So thank you very much once again for this very informative uh, presentation and session. Um, thank you for, to Ben for, for facilitating and moderating the Q&A session. As we have said at the beginning, um, there will be a, a parallel event organized in another region, sort of to accommodate other time zones. Um, I believe it will be still in English, Ben, right? Or are we doing it in French or, 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 or Arabic or something? <laughs> uh, possibly. We have been talking to Richard, who's on the call today, about uh, a third event to uh, run for the Francophone community. Okay, fantastic. So there you go. Um, I would like to also say thank you very much to all the participants for taking time and um, you know if we have any residual questions you know we will we'll try to maybe uh, look at those uh, that if they were not already answered and, and get some answers I mean you also are able to contact them supply colleagues directly we will make the presentation and the recording from this session available um, so once again thank you very much to all the speakers the moderator and all the participants for joining us today for this very first webinar on the series on the logistics information management information system. Thank you very much and once again and have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.